I like calling people horse. Thanks for a great name. I love that phrase. Well, horse. <laughs> but like, sir. 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 <laughs> We're going to start bowling this evening. Yeah. Can I steer it? Mm, we'll see how we get on ourselves before we worry about letting you steer. Daddy needs to learn how to drive it first before I can teach you. Mr. Sloan told me to check my oil levels. So, just the oil cutter on the front of the PTO. There's a little bung here. It's going to open that up, check there's still oil up to that level. And if there's not, something's wrong. I did look in below her. You can see there's a little bit of a dampness there. I don't think it's very much, but I'm pretty sure one of these height fittings is spraying the tiniest little bit of oil. So we'll check the level first. Oil, lovely red stuff. So it is there. And I think we're lying down the hill a little bit, which could be the reason it's not just run forward to meet me. That's it, probably could stand a wee top up. Here we are in that. Not a huge amount of oil, but definitely some. Definitely some. Right. Front door. Back door, PTO makes the more spin. So this switch turns on the front door. Okay, got it. Got it. Got it. This switch turns on the back door. Yeah, and then this here tells us how fast the shaft that drives them is turning. And we use a hand throttle. You asked me where we were moving a while ago. Move the hand throttle forward and set the revs. So we're trying to get to a thousand here. You see it? Yeah. So if you're near enough, we're at what, 960 there? Yeah. It's close enough for me. We're mowing in the C box, but are in the forward. And then these two levers here control the ups and the downs. So front mower first, drop her like that. And then put her in the float, which is all the way forward. And then drop, when we get us back more over to the grass, drop it too. We're floating and we're mowing. Simple as that. So what speed are we doing, Eva? 950 miles per hour. No, that's the RPMs, that's the revs that the shaft's doing. It's the one below it. What speed are we doing? 12.2. 12 kilometers per hour. So the reason we slow down there is because the speed's getting a wee bit rougher. Colin's a wee rough corner as well. 1,000. We hit 1,000 there. So it's a wee bit trickier whenever you're going this way because I have to guess how far away from that other row I have to leave for my right hand mower to cut. And if I get it wrong, I'll miss a bit. Whereas whenever you're going the other way, you can just see your front corner and put it along the edge. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's a little bit harder to judge, not a lot. The art to this is like mowing the lawn, straight lines, straight lines. Okay, um, I know you'll be angry with me for saying this, but Alan told me to say this. Um, <laughs> okay, Alan, was... shh, Alan didn't tell you to say this. What did Alan not tell you to say? Um, that he was a better driver than you and you're rubbish compared to him. To do that on camera. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, what do you think about Alan's driving? If you're going to judge my driving like that against Alan, why do you think Alan's a better driver? Um, I don't know. <laughs> you're talking nonsense, the pair is. <laughs> and earlier on, um, you said that I'm going to get lots of education on silage, and I think I might match marry a farmer or buy a farm because um, I actually like being in the machinery and if I marry the man who likes
light machinery like you, then these two could work together and... Yeah, what you need to do is find a man that likes the livestock and the cows and there's plenty of acres and land. So then I'll come and I'll do all his drive, tractor driving and machinery work for him. Because he likes the cows, he doesn't like the tractor driving. But marry for love, don't marry for land. That's my advice to you. Yeah. You think you'd be into the tractor driving either? What? You think you'd want to be into the tractor driving? Yeah. What were you doing last night? I was driving a car rashly and trying not to bump into concrete or gears. There was a man, not a manhole, uh, a well in the middle of the field. Big concrete bunker type thing. I had to watch not drive into it. But what were you doing with the Jeep? Why were you driving around and around in circles around the field? What were you trying to do? Um. I was trying to chase seagulls and crows in the car. What were you wanting? Did you get them chased away? Yeah, kind of, but they kept flowing back wherever I wasn't. And then when we moved into the other field, they all went away, so it wasn't much fun. They all went away and stayed away, so it wasn't much fun. So then you won, you won the war, if they stayed away. <laughs> I mean, that first straight line day, but I'm all stayed up again, ready to make it rough again in this way. I could get used to this either. What? I'm only in the second field, but I could get used to this. Do you like it? Yeah, I do. It's nice and steady. No big pressure on. I like C3. I can go faster than C4, but I like taking a nation, can I? Like, that's 12.3 kilometers an hour. That's C4, and we're doing 15 kilometers an hour. And a nice smooth feeling that I can handle that there too. I see how the mowers cut it, then all the grass spreads through it, and then they leave a bit out creating the lines, so it's not all covered in big heavy grass. She's doing a lovely job. Is this rectangular or square? Because I can't, can't Well, what's a square mean? What's a square? All even sides. Right. Well, what does it look like to you? Does it look like a square or a rectangle? Rectangle. Correct. So everything we've mowed is like a rectangle, yeah? But see the bit that's left? It's more like a triangle. Because that hedge doesn't run parallel to this hedge. You know what parallel means? No. Parallel means my arms are straight, they're, they're straight to each other. Or I can do parallel like that shape and they're still straight to each other. Parallel means the two lines run the same direction. Yes. But if I do that, they're not parallel. <laughs> yeah. Yeah? But if you do that, they're still parallel. They're still parallel, but they're wider apart. Yes. Parallel, 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 parallel. <laughs> you look like you're dancing. <laughs> I look like a robot dancing. <laughs> well, how are you enjoying your time out of school? People are think, starting to think that this whole yeah, virus thing is, is affecting the children badly. Are, are you suffering during this time out of school? Do you feel like it's it's been a sad time in your life? Are you okay with it? I'm okay with it because I get to see Jarvis and go on fun walks. Who's Jarvis? Jarvis is a horse that cross Kennan and sometimes I feed him some grass. <laughs> what does your daddy say about horses? Well, you say that we're not allowed a horse and we're not getting a horse and you're allergic to horses. Bingo! It ain't gonna happen, darling. Just ain't gonna happen. Another reason to find yourself a wee man with a bit of land that if you ever want to have your only horse, you don't have to buy a wee field to go with it. But no boyfriends until you're 25. No. What? No. One time when uh, we were talking about boyfriends, and you said that the age for me would be 18. I have no recollection of this conversation. Didn't happen. Did. No. Did. No. Did. No. Did. No. Did. Here, I need to watch these more than other. 
What? What? Look, you're making me miss bits. Talking about boyfriends. You're, tr you're trying to change the conversation. Look at that big speed wobble. Look, look at the state of it. That's your fault. Chatting about boys. She's just on her limit, got up the hill there now. We're doing 14 and a half K with the two mowers on at 900 RPM. And it's not that steep a hill, but she knows there's a hill. I don't think this tractor would handle a third mower that well. Sometimes you can get a, a third mower over this side, called butterfly mowers even. It's called butterfly mowers because they go down like this here, look. They open out like that, like a butterfly wi fly wings. Look. Look at that there. Look at the state of that there. Huh? Go oh, ahead, tidy that up, Eva. Could you be telling Al we missed any bits now? She's a bit wicked in between the gear changes at full rev, isn't she? Yeah. I'll have to try and straighten that up again. So much easier cutting this direction. And like. It's gonna rain, look. Or cut grass and it's gonna rain. I told all the to mowers side since Saturday night. Because it looked chancy a little bit, a little bit on Monday. And I thought it doesn't look that chancy on Monday, you might get away with it. And sure enough, we haven't had water here. This is now what day is this? It's Tuesday. Tuesday. So we haven't had water here since well, on Thursday or Wednesday last week. It's sure to rain now, hey. Is it good to cut silage in the rain or not? No, you see, really, you want to cut it dry and then you want to let it wilt to get what? some moisture out of it. So if you let the grass lie after it's mowed for a little bit, it will dry even further. There's a wee thing there now, if you could just do there's a mess of wee tiny bits when I come out of the road. See that? That's because I'm steering slightly away as I come out of the end of the row and then that last mower is not getting it. There's a wee sight in the middle here that I missed. That's the problem with missing one in the middle of the row is you're less likely to fix it at the time. The end of the row is not so bad. See a big wobble there. Where is she? There she is. See the wee green bit? The problem is it looks alright now, but once he owns all that them swartz is left it, it'll stand out like a short thumb. Yeah. So hand throttle off, PTO off on the front, PTO off on the back, and then before we left this back more we have to wait for it to stop spinning. So that you don't fold it up with a PTO shaft on. PTO stands for please turn over. It stands for on this power take off so it oh. takes power off the engine to power take off shaft right do we fold the mower up Eva and the reason to keep the back window shut is so all that dust and dirt doesn't come in around and make me want to sneeze and the good thing now about this thing actually is we can really look at the blades see if we've done any damage while we're mowing that'll look okay to me but I have to open this gate I think I might become a farmer or I love animals so I think I'm going to become a vet and then I could help out on Andrew and Alan's farm. So Mr Clay looks like he's going to get lucky with the weather. That's the big black cloud <laughs> that's just about sweeping past us here. You can see it clear and out right behind us. Uh, front mower is looking lovely, I have to say. Very pleased with it, very pleased with it. We've not touched anything with the front mower at all, so I know the blades are going to be fine in it. All look good. We did touch a branch over in there. Yeah, there's a wee tucked edge there. Just there, that one's looking down. Tuck the edge in that one too. Now, let's see if 
is the bar for changing blades, and I think these are the blades I need. See, there's a wee arrow on them. See, just there. So that's what you call the uh, right hand blade, because the discs should go different directions. One off. One on. Hey. It doesn't look like I just got it on right. There we go. That's how quick you can change blades either. So, come here. So you can turn the blades over the body either. So see that just that blunt edge has hit something, touched it, softened it. I'm going to turn it over this way so it's cutting sharp again. Sus, come on. So, when I change the blades, so I find the wee tail, that whenever you change the blades, the one that prevents them from flying away, actually makes it that wee bit more fittery to get them up in, but you know when you've got them in place because they lock up into the collar properly. So. Hey, this looks like a narrow enough wee gap. We'll find out when we chance this down through it. Front board sits out very far in front of you, Eva, so it's the one to watch. The back one will pretty much come through and follow us wherever we're going. So I think I've figured out how to mow headlands with a set of doubles. Does McHale sponsor us, sir? No, it's just they give us the demo and that's enough because it costs them money to have those machines out in the countryside working and wear and tear and parts and then whenever they go to sell them at the end of the year they're not worth as much money because they're not new so it costs them money enough to hand out demos without us charging them because we need the mowers to mow the grass but if I didn't need the mowers now I have a different story are you going to keep right? mowers? I'm going to explain the headland turn now if, if you're taking a gentle corner she'll, leave the wee, she'll not leave the wee stripe this is a fairly sweeping bend we're going to slip all around this one if we can the back mower on the right hand turn, the back mower tucks in fairly well. We missed the wee straight there, we'll pin that up at the end. So you better leave it a decent straight to, to clean up. Why do we need silage? Winter feed for the animals, darling. Oh, well then it's good the grass grows quickly because then more silage. Yeah, oh, well, I'll look up this a second time, so we will. That's why he needs to get it off, because it's getting late. It takes longer to recover if you don't cut it early. But then you get more bulk. A lot of, there's a lot of debate about what good silage is, Eva. A lot of people like it to be young, early, soft, lush grass. You see the way that there is quite stemmy. There's like wee, wee fat stems on it, like your finger. And then there's a wee head on it. See the wee seed that's coming off at the top of the horse? Yeah. Um, that's called being shot, because it's it's headed. Um, it's not as nice as stuff. Men don't really want that for their silage. It makes good hay. Let's do this again, right? So once you get in the corner, left the front mower, once it's out of grass, go on around with the back mower. The square out the corner, pick her up, reverse back, set the uh, front mower in where the back mower was. It would take me a long time to learn compared to you. It took me a few goes, Eva. It wasn't just the first corner I figured that out. But have you got the hang of it now? Would yeah, I think I have the hang of it now. The problem is with a sweeping corner, with a gentle corner, is like, is it sweeping enough not to miss a bit? Or do you straighten her out? Like that one, no problem. She, she'll not miss a bit there. No issues at all. I want to become a farmer. You what? I want to become a farmer. You do? Why? Because I like it out here. You like it out here? Yeah, I like being in the tractor and being up high with you, talking, and I love feeding animals as well. I love feeding Jarvis the horse. You can ride horses. There are no horses on my farm. Well, they're well on my farm. I don't think your grandma McLean would be able to have horses either. Why? I just don't think it now. What are you going to do with a horse to make money? 
You make a profit, you pay for its keep. What? How do you make a profit with a horse? To pay for its keep. How do you make a profit for a dog? For a horse? Well, for a dog. No, a dog's a pet. Oh, you want a, a pet horse? Is that what you're saying? Yes. All right. A pet horse with chicken. That's okay. Right. I suppose that's all right, but the problem with a horse is the size of the thing. How do you feed a horse? What do you need to feed a horse? How many tons of feed do you need a year for a horse? Do you like your t-shirt? Yeah. What does ag life mean? Um, it's kind of where all the animals are. I think I must try and watch what Ag Life because I love it. What does the Ag stand for? Big words. Agriculture. Correct. Bingo. <laughs> like if you were a farmer and once you get a hold of your farm that you're chatting about yet, you would be living the Ag Life because you would be living the lifestyle of agriculture. Ag Life. Because you'd want, because you'd want, because uh, you want to buy animals and. Because you want to just live on the land the way we're doing right now, cutting your crops, looking after your livestock, working with your machinery, looking at the view. Like, that's some view tonight. I keep forgetting that these aren't anybody we know. I was just about to say, are they Alan's mowers? No, Alan, if you look around the fields there, you'll see Alan mowing away. He's, he cut right here when this field for me, which is really nice, because you know the bit of mowing that nobody likes is cutting the outside sward. You know why? No. Can you figure it out? What will be an outside sward but will make it painful for the mower? Stones? Stones, yes. Bingo. So bits and pieces of stones and rocks and bits of trees fell into the hedge. You can't see it because the grass is all grown up. Thorns? The thorns is no big deal. It's, it's, it's in the bed, the mower, the metal blades spinning and turning don't like the um, stones mostly. That's the problem. Big tree trunks can cause problems too. We had one of those earlier. Bit of a branch. And that's why I changed those blades earlier. But they'll straighten out again with a sledgehammer. So whenever we're here making videos we might as well try and throw it off clean. Not if Tom chatting about us. Now Tom's watching there. He's watching to see if we're cutting it clean enough. And he's watching to see if we miss any bits. And that's when you have to try and do a good job when somebody's watching you. I remember asking my dad one time, he says, I says to him, how close to the hedge should we go? He says, well, you just have to gauge that yourself. But he says, if you're going to go close anywhere, he says, go close to the gate, because that's the bit everybody will see. Why? Because Tom's come into the gate there, and that's where he's sitting, he'll decide himself there how close it should be. And he, we'll either come close enough or we won't. But that's what I was telling you, is Alan opened this field, so we don't have to care. But Alan decides how close we went to the hedge. Not us. Good crop in that hay. Savage. What does savage mean? Unreal. Cracker. Super. So Fantastic. So. Lady. <laughs> so Epic. You said that my driving was savage, so. <laughs> Did it? <laughs> yeah, you said that it was savage. Yes. So, was it good? Uh, or is it the real were, summit? For a first timer, hey, you were letting her at it like I was impressed. Now, I was definitely impressed. <laughs> I'd say now you just want to be careful if you're on your own, show a bit of vehicle sympathy, you know, throw her up in the corners a wee bit hard now, you could roll over and roll her over in her side. My favourite thing was to try and do donuts. Yeah, that's what I know, that's what I mean. This, she wasn't just designed for that job. Like in the farm flex videos it can switch back from us talking here to like back over there where we where we're in the cab farming. Yes, that is the magic of making videos, darling. I'm gonna teach you how to do that someday. So you edit them both together yeah. at the places. So what we do is right, we bring in our microphones, we both wear microphones, and we match that up to the GoPros in the cab and we get it all lined up so that whenever you hear our voice it matches what our lips are doing. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And then we chop it off. So the bits where we're not talking, we just throw them away. Yeah. And the bits where we're talking rubbish, we throw them away. All the magic happens in the edit. Seems Tom's gone. I keep wanting to call him Tom Pember Pemberton <laughs> Tom because... Pemberton. <laughs> what do you know about Tom Pemberton? Well, one time I heard 
heard you saying that you were going to do a vlog with him. So. We did. We made a video with Tom. We we video Tom. We made a full episode for Farmflex with him. So it wasn't a vlog on YouTube. It was a full episode of Farmflex. So we got to meet Tom and Tom's daddy, and we got to see all of their farm. Do you like Tom? Yep. Tom is full of energy, full of beans. He's a bit like you. Though I'm grumpy as well. Oh yeah. I don't know if Tom's grumpy or not. Well, we ask him. Start shouting in the comments if Tom is grumpy. Yeah, if Tom's grumpy or not. Yeah, we need to know. We need to know is Tom ever again grumpy? We could change his name from Tom Hembert to Grumpy Tom. <laughs> if he is grumpy, otherwise it's energetic Tom. I think I'm not big heavy grump with three mowers on this three tractor will be hanging. Because I'm going up the hill there at 12k. And there's 13 and 14k. And you can hear the engine is at her limit. She's doing 920 RPM there. And that's all she's fit for. Just a wee bit rough out of here. I don't like going that fast. I want to go slower. What's the pit? That's where we sow all this grass. We'll uh, roll it up and we'll put it in the, through the pickup of the harvester and blow it into chillers and we'll cart it into the yard and we'll heave it out in a pile and that's what we call the pit where we push all the grass into a pile. Some people call it the stack. Uh, some people call it the slab, where they set the stack on top of the slab. Oh, I know what you're talking about now. It's normally yellow G JCB cab. Or yellow JCBs would push in a lot of grass, yes. In this case, we'll be Alan's Merlot, hopefully pushing up the grass if he can get his tires on. Did you see me cleaning the dust off the radiator even? Yeah. We weren't warming yet. You see that wee gauge there? What? See that wee gauge there? That one. Yeah. That's the water temperature, and your engine is cooled by water. Now, if the water boils, you've destroyed your engine. It's overheated. So, what you've got at the front is a radiator. And what the radiator does is takes the hot water and tries to cool it a bit before it's reused in the engine. So, it needs fresh, cool air to work. And what happens is all that dust that's coming off them mowers gets sucked onto the grills and it blocks the airflow so if you're not careful after a while and keep an eye on it you can end up overheat and you've destroyed your engine yes there's all dead ahead looks like a lot of fun to be driving a tractor it is a lot of fun to drive a tractor not only been these corners very square he's some on for the square corners does he like the square corners? Seems to, aye. Does Alan like what we're doing or not? Does he like this half on you? Yes, he loves it. Which means he doesn't have to do it. Imagine if he had to mow all of that grass on his own. Like he normally does. Uh, it's a great uh, to let your daddy out of the office for a play, isn't it? Yeah, it's nice of him to let you out for a play. It is very nice of him to let me out for a play. Because normally you don't... But this is why I bought my own tractor, so whenever I come out for a play, I can enjoy what I'm driving. This is the whole point of the thing. If I'm not sitting in all this tractor, we do air conditioning, sweat, and I can hardly see out the windows for dirt. I'm in my own nice, quiet 7, 8, 10, with a Sal McHale doubles on. Love of life. Hey, we're not long getting that field stroked out either. We're definitely more than halfway across. We're definitely right? not doing that field, there's a cow in it. That's right. Rode up Al's hay that field. I'm not so fast on cows because normally when there's a cow, there's a bull. I'd have thought you'd have been a natural cow woman. I had you to like dairy cows, are real quiet, nice to work with because you're with them every day. They're, yeah, but they're I not as wild like as Al's bulls. cattle. Like. Like bulls, no, bulls are dangerous and you give a bull a lot of respect, you don't mess with a bull, that's correct. Yeah, and normally when there's a cow there's a bull. Normally when there's a cow there's a bull, not necessarily, sometimes the bulls are kept separate and they're in a safe pen or a safe, a safe field. But do you know what else is, is as dangerous as a bull? What? A cow with a young calf. 
so protective about her baby calf. Yeah. That if you go anywhere near, she could be in, she could be in trouble with her. Must be out of batteries. Cameras is about to go bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. bye, -bye. Cameras going bye bye. So we're saying bye bye. Just in the fading from me here. I see him out hoping. Isn't a great sign? I see him out looking for something there. Which makes me think he lost a tiny of conditioner or something. So far, really enjoying the McHales. Floating over rough ground, floating over ruts. I'm not giving them a fair crack of up in terms of my check chains aren't fitted to my tractor yet, so there is a wee bit of sway on the back arms. But I think. On your headland turns you had to be gentle anyway if you're rash she will throw the back leg up she does need the four wheel drive on like a lot of weight hanging over there i would definitely recommend hanging that half ton on the opposite side like they recommended i would say that's a go but without it still doing a mighty job cutting clean happy as larry i could push him on a bit harder but i don't know the ground when i Bang her up on the C4 there, and the lighter stuff is grand. And the heavy stuff, the tractor's just at her limit. That's the truth. The uh, the two mowers. It's very ample, very adequate, as the man once said. Very, very adequate. Uh, he's on the blower here. Uh, all probability, it's going to be a little bit of moisture overnight. But fingers crossed it won't. If we can get to lunchtime tomorrow without too much rain, that'll be good enough stuff. What, have you lost ours? Not sure. Did she give a crunch out of her? Ah, yes, yes. I'm glad you opened that field up, horse. Uh, that's from on the pole. That's not. That is. That's a big claim when it gets Did you not, did you not <laughs> clean your ground after you were finished? She shoot that, really. How far did you take it with you? Uh, I must have took her about 15 foot. <laughs> I've lost a dine, or well, I found half a dine, which was one and a half missing. But I can't mind if there's the other one was missing in the other corner or not. Just ringing your mechanic to check. Ah, but he's useless, he won't answer the phone when the sun's just as bad. <laughs> oh. You'd nearly think there was a hint of, uh, there's Alan calling. He knows, he knows there's something up there. <laughs> just turn that phone over there, son. Yeah. <laughs> I'm surprised, I th that was the only bit, but. She made a flaming prey of rack. She, like the way that's true, even like she didn't just fire her through, she was. She did a bit of mulching. Uh, the chances, even if the other time did come up, I only found that one because it tripped on it and stuck it under the ground. Yes. Are you more concerned about putting it through my moors or your harvester? Well. <laughs> my harvester would be more important, like. <laughs> <laughs> you see, in fact, you know what? McHale, out of a gesture, a good date since I was saving the airmore, she just gave me a set, like, just, I don't, just uh, don't think my wee tractor would have done too well, just keeping up with you there, like. Oh, that was me, that was me. You, but... That was me at the moment, that's as hard as I can go. Oh, I could have went a wee bit faster than you, like, but he had two boards on. <laughs> uh, why did you not drive around the first time? I drove round every single field and I thought because you were coming behind me, if I got right round once, the worst one, then you can start. But you see, if you were like one hour away, I could have come right in behind you. Now I have to wait for you to do a full lap. Unless I go the same way as you. Oh, you could go the same way as you, you know. Yeah. That, okay. <laughs> Would you like some help in finding something? I was just about to say. <laughs> Artwork for that. You can sell that, Al. Right, what are you, Venice? On the pole, dog. <laughs> As mulched by Al. 
Well, then I don't think I said no need to be coming down into here. Like. <laughs> Farmer, get her into the corners there, son. <laughs> I never normally even cut down this, but like, ah, them old hallows did the event in your field, sir. Don't they clean it up after themselves? All right, I'll, I'll get the lawyers on, get my claim. <laughs> Here, did it rain up above? Nope. Then I started. She going. just slept out around beside us. That was the same, just right over the hospital. Big black cloud, and I just went right the whole way around. You have the luck this time, Alan. If we make it through the night. So you make it through the night, get the rake in first thing. Oh, lovely red sky. So we big sunsets at the minute. So we're just enjoying the McHales. I have to say I'm enjoying them. We'll get back at it. We're not quite finished here, but we're going ready. He only decided to mow at 4 o'clock this evening after me with Adam on Saturday night. Come on, mow. Even got my dad up to take her for a test run that night. Hasn't rained since. Christ knows what we're in tonight. Mr. Clyde. It's all over until tomorrow. <laughs> until tomorrow. And the acres is that? That's a good question. 70 I think. 70? How much, how much did I mow? I think you must have done about 15 acres. 15? Good 15 over what? 7 hours? Uh, it, 3 acres an hour? 2, or, two acres an hour? Uh, I don't know me but more than me like. Well probably still weren't that fast like. No I wasn't. I wasn't like trying to set some land speed record with my one like. And I probably had much more left than an hour splitter. Mm. But now I get under the end there, like starting to get a feel for which way to grind the telegraph poles and Aye. getting her. I was doing a lot of reversion and farting about at the ends, but you know, we was getting a feel. If you had a bigger headland, you could set her in and just start her first time if you want, you know. Yeah, you wouldn't want to have just been doing the pole field to start with. You no, know. well, to be fair, Alan did start me in the little tiny garden he had, and it wasn't the place to learn. Like, but that was a good tenth of an acre. <laughs> 
Right, I'm thinking that I'm going to send Johnny with this back to drop them home first thing and time he's back you should be fit to start drawing. In theory, I that would do. Because I would be all day wrecking then. Who do I blame for the strips that's missing the field? Oh you! Definitely Most not, definitely, definitely you. Not, definitely not. The centre of that field is me and the str you can tell the difference in the rows now. Like, as a thing, I will be able to identify them in the, the wrecking scenario because my rows are flat, there's a flat top on them, and Al's is lovely curved row like that there. And I tell you what, because I knew he was going to accuse me of all this, I actually went around and cleaned up all the corners that he delivered to the FE bets missed. <laughs> I wouldn't accuse nobody of nothing. <laughs> I, I don't know what I was thinking out, there's a lot of wee strips I've missed here and there. Like, oh. To be fair to you, now, 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 are you GPS in the night or not GPS in the night? You've got the type, they've got the gaff, uh, you're not completely useless by the way. I'm lying through my teeth, it's a GPS. Because <laughs> <laughs> like, I could not open a field the way you opened the fields there, that's unreal. Makes some difference, and I was, I was coming down there one time and it was just the two of the fellow two more and I'm like, you nearly think you marked it out with GPS, he is the gift. <laughs> well it's funny out in GPS, it says a wee bit funny, she's not like the fanciest one in the world. I didn't know I'd done the setting wrong and she was very very sensitive. And I one day I was left and right dad was up like a banana up the field. And I was the hell that's no use. And then when you have her set right, she isn't a bad job for that. Yes, yes. Saves yes, you a wee yes, minute yes, or two, yes. like, you know, if you're not having to over your tracks and mess about the points and that. Aye. So that's us back in the office. Job well done. Uh big thank you to Michael and James who set the motors up for me. Uh we did not adjust them. Uh we didn't change anything on them. We never set them off even from when they arrived <laughs> till we finally got them out in the field. We're more feared to do that. Right <laughs> well, I knew I knew what they told me in the video. I had to read it if I needed to, but I didn't. Uh, they were floating to perfection. I was amazed actually with the the play of the check chains not been on there. That there was no miss stripes. Uh, you know, it was all the time I took a bit of a speed wobble, and uh, <laughs> <I didn't know that. laughs> uh, nothing was missed. I liked the way you could go around left hand bends, and she didn't miss anything. I figured out how to move out my corners on the right hand bends uh, to not leave a mess. Uh, well, no. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll see in daylight. We'll see in daylight. And just before we started, actually, uh, I went down to see Paul to check the, the levels on the, the gearbox in my front PDU. And he pointed out he, he'd never seen a bed like it in the moors. The front moor has seven discs, and the left hand side. The two discs turn the same way, so that's something unusual. Take another look the next time you see a Mikhail front mower uh, and have a really good look at it. So, I don't know why. I have a little more to say. Thank you, Mikhail. Mm -hmm.